Kitco Mining's special coverage of the Vancouver Resource Investment Conference is brought to you by First Mining Gold. Chris Donaldson knows all about advancing projects in the energy transition space, whether it has to do with stints at Western Copper and Gold or now executive chairman of Tin One. Chris, welcome to Kitco. Hey, thanks for having me, Michael. Chris, explain to us why tin is important within the energy transition space. Yeah, well, it's 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 considered the forgotten uh, metal in, in the space often, and uh, but when you think about it, the tin is used in almost any energy application. Um, half of its use is, is with soldering, so any it, it's kind of the glue that holds together batteries or any kind of electrification. What's the current supply picture for tin, Chris? Yeah, well, on the supply side, it, it's uh, really caused a bit of a squeeze. So 75% of supply of tin comes from Myanmar, DRC, uh, Indonesia, and, and China. And China has been hoarding the material uh, itself. And the other, other areas are, you know, kind of have some du dubious dis uh, distinctions with them. So th there's been a lack of supply on the, on the market. Um, and then if you look on the other side, on the demand side, uh, obviously electrification is, has increased. Um, and, and so is the demand for tin. So it's put a real squeeze on the, on the price of tin. Um, the price, you know, over the last two years, it's almost a perfect chart. It hit uh, all-time highs, over 50,000 a ton uh, about a month and a half ago. It's pulled back in the last couple of weeks as, as most uh, materials have, but it's still double the historic uh, average. Now, Tin One, you have a project in Tasmania. Yeah, we have a couple projects in Tasmania. I was just down there a few weeks ago, finally got to get into Australia and, and get some boots on the ground. Um, yeah, one that we're, we're drilling right now, which is Great Pyramid, a historic resource on it that we we're reconfirming and then hoping that it extends. Uh, and then ultimately put a, put a new resource around that. So that, that's active right now. And once we're finished that, we're gonna move to our Aberfoyle project, which is a historic tin district, about 45 minutes uh, from, from Great Pyramid. And it had produced over 2 million tons of, of tin. So again, hopefully uh, be able to resurrect that. What's the history of uh, mining in Tasmania? Well, it's got a long history of it. I mean, a lot of Cornish miners came down and, and there used to be a number of producing uh, companies down there. There's still uh, a couple of big ones uh, that are there. Uh, as I said, we're in a, a forward tin producing area. So it's, it's a great area to be in, especially where our two projects are. It's actually um, designated as a as, uh, commercial production area. It used to be where it was logged before. So access for us is about as good as you can get. There are roads everywhere right up to right up to our targets. Now, analyst note that you sent me, there doesn't seem that tin is really a part of any types of major diversified miners, for instance. So, you know, you're advancing this project, it possibly becomes part of an acquisition. Where would it possibly fit? Yeah, I mean, tin is, like I said before, it's kind of the forgotten mineral there, or metal, and, and uh, there are not a lot of pure tin producers. Um, it's a small market. Uh, but it's one that reacts uh, very cyclically. And, is, and so when there is a squeeze, the price tends to go up. Um, so that makes it attractive. And of course, it's had underinvestment in the last uh, number of years when the tin price was low. Um, so we're gonna advance these projects and, and uh, maybe build them out ourselves eventually, but uh, certainly set them up that they, they may be attractive to, to somebody to take over. A uh, brief note, maybe you could just talk a bit about out, Outback Goldfields as well, please. Yeah, so I was finally able to get down in, into to Australia and see those properties as well after after two years of hard lockdown, which is unbelievable, really. But um, things are going well there. We're drilling and, and doing lots of work and, and looking forward to getting some results out in, in the summer here. Chris, we go back a while. I know your stints at Western Copper. Uh, and what I've always noticed about you in this career is that you've always been very good with outreach. You've always been good with uh, participation. I've seen you like in uh, various community events. Um, we're at a mining convention right now. There's hundreds of juniors around right now. If you're speaking to them right now, what would you say is important about being involved in charities, being involved in community? Why is this outreach important? Yeah, I mean, well, on one side, it's I mean, it's the right thing to do, um, and and I'll say this: it's it's the one aspect that can stop uh, even a good project that might be highly economic in, in its tracks if, if if you don't get buy-in from um, stakeholders and First Nations or in and the community in general. So. I mean, I guess advice would be just to, to, to go in early and, and seek input and, and get involved in the community, but not just what looks good on a, on a Twitter clip later on, but actually what, what the community needs or wants. And, and 
you know, that's been my experience and it, it, and it seems to have gone a long ways, um, making good friendships and, and really establishing trust later on. And I think, I think the whole mining industry is definitely going in that direction, but uh, we still have some ways to, to go. Chris, good luck at Tin One. Thank you very much. He's Chris Donaldson. He's executive chair of Tin One. My name is Michael McRae and you're watching Kiko Mining. Kitco Mining's special coverage of the Vancouver Resource Investment Conference is brought to you by First Mining Gold.